welcome to City Family Church in, in the, the studio. studio. My name is Prophetess Jane. I'm one of the elders at City Family Church in Coventry in England and with me today is... Teacher Andy. I'm also one of the elders at City Family Church and I minister there with my beautiful wife, Prophetess Jane. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Teacher Andy, we're continuing our series today of picking at the Proverbs. So welcome everyone. Yeah. We're so glad that you're with us today. You can follow us in your Bible in this discussion or you can just listen. But thanks for being with us. Yeah, it's great to have you. Yeah, yeah, amen. And so the proverb that we're picking up today, as always, an amazing proverb to build your life on, Teacher Andy. Yeah. A proverb to live by. And if you follow this proverb, your life will be amazing. Yeah, and um, as always, we're not doing a full exposition of the proverb. We're just picking at it, um, we're picking out um, certain aspects so we can get uh, some more understanding, picking um, parts of it so we can get some bits of the truth. So prepare to be blessed, amen. amen. God's word always blesses us, sets us free, saves us, encourages us, lifts us up. Tells us the truth. Yes. The tells truth. Us how to live. Yes. Pilate said to Jesus, What is truth? And the truth was standing right before him. Yeah. So today we are bringing you the truth. Amen. Amen. So the proverb that we're picking at is Proverbs 11 25. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. Mm. 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 Great proverb. Yeah. So this proverb, Teacher Andy, it's, it's stating a principle. Yes. Yeah, it's stating a principle. And um, the word blessing, as we know, goes right back to Genesis 1. Yeah. Most things go right back to Genesis 1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, when God made men and women, he blessed them. And uh, God is the source of blessing. Yeah. You want blessing, God is the source. And we're made in his image. And we are meant to imitate him, to be yeah. Christ-like, uh, to be like Jesus. And so this proverb is setting out a principle here of blessing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the first time the word blessing appears in the Bible... Uh, is in Genesis chapter 1 verse 22 where God creates all kinds of sea creatures and um, he blesses them and tells them to um, go forth mm. and, and multiply and fill the sea and the oceans and everything like that uh, and then the second time uh, it appears um, it's in verse um, uh, it's in verse um, 22 um, sorry, verse 28, um, God uses the word blessing again. Mm. Um, and it's all to do with um, going multiplication and, um, and being fruitful. Um, so God is a God of blessing and he is the source of blessing. Amen. And we are meant to be like that. We are meant to be sources of blessing. Like him. Like him, yes. Following him created in his image to be a blessing yes so uh teacher andy um what is it in the hebrew oh in the hebrew right okay yeah. let's um let's have a let's look at get this. into uh what the um, yeah. the hebrew says yeah. okay so obviously this is a transliteration uh, because we're we're speaking a different language here mm. um so it says this the soul generous will be made rich and he who waters also he will be watered so it's um, slightly different uh, prophetess jane from mm -hmm. the uh, the um the english uh, translation the english translation um uh, in the uh, uh english standard version anyway uh, the first word is whoever whoever but in fact um the hebrew word doesn't have that um word whoever um, it has it has this word nefesh, mm. which is the soul. Um, the so there's a slight di difference there. 
Um, the soul is the self, it's that individual life, that individual creation. Um, and uh, that word, like you said earlier, that word goes right back into Genesis. <laughs> it always does. <laughs> it always does, and this time it's Genesis chapter 2. Um, God has made a man uh, out of the, uh, the clay of the earth, uh, and what he does, he, he breathes the breath of life into his nostrils. Uh, and what the, uh, the, the scripture says, um, it says, of life and became the man a uh, being, living. And um, what it is, is uh, the word that's used there is, is uh, le nefesh. Nefesh again is this word that's used, a soul, a life, a, mm. an individual living being. Mm. So um, the proverb is, is saying that it's about this soul. It's about this individual living creature, created creature, the, the soul the the innermost part of the person so there's a slight difference there with whoever um, it's more of a internal deeper thing because this is about the life the inner person of a person the soul mm. rather than just whoever mm. anybody um, yes it can mean that but this is in Hebrew something more um, it's it's a deeper thing it's it's the very life of that person and um, so nefesh soul blessing um, to grow fat prosperous anointed oh yeah that, that's, um, that's how it goes on yeah yeah because um, uh, this um, this word um, uh, generous um, yeah. in in the transliteration mm. is 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 blessing um uh, and then we have this um uh tedushan this word um which um, in the english um is um whoever brings blessing will be enriched yes but in the in the hebrew um it is um it is this word tedushan and and the literal translation is is um, to to be to be fat <laughs> to grow to become fat now i know that has kind of negative connotations nowadays with um people uh, being so um so conscious of uh, health and uh, and uh, weight uh, control and, and all that kind of thing but in um, ancient in the ancient hebrew mind to be blessed um, was to be made fat, to, to, to grow and to be prosperous. That was in the mind. So this word um, is to, to grow fat, to become fat, um, to become um, prosperous. But also there's a sense of anointing here in this word. So it's, it's growing fat in the sense of being anointed and, and anointing, where does anointing come from? It comes from God. So, so there's a, the, an idea here of, um, of, of uh, growth, um, uh, not in, in bodily weight, but growth in, in um, prosperity and in anointing. And that can only come from one source. So um, this soul, this innermost person being um, generous, being a blessing, mm. um, will have, and, and the word is will be made fat, will grow in prosperity, will be made rich in anointing. Wow. Wow. And also, you spoke, Teacher Randy, of. Um, to take away the ashes from the altar. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And privilege. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it, yeah. That I mean, so so I mean, it's a big word. So there's lots of meaning to it, um, and as it, I mean, lots of it uh, in different mm. um, interpretations uh, does say to make fat to anoint, um, uh, but one of them, uh, one of the 
the sort of far off meanings is mm. uh, to take away the ashes from the altar. Now that was a duty of um, a, an anointed priest. So to take away the ashes from, from the altar was a, 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 an exalted position. Only specialised people, um, anointed priests could do that. So, so this is all bound up in this word to um to be made rich to be made some kind of uh, uh anointing that enables you to be able to do things that others can't ah oh, wow to, to 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 be able to like, take the the ashes from the altar the um, to allow the service of god to continue because obviously the sacrifices are going on and if the ashes are still there building up yeah. then there's a function needed to take away the ashes mm. and that is by a, this holy anointed person who who has this special duty to take away the ashes so you can see in the hebrew mind mm. when the writer of this uh, proverb writes this this is all bound up in this word that if you are like this you are blessing then you you have these kind of um unique privileges mm -hmm. um, f that comes from God, from serving God. You can do things that others can't do. Mm. I'm so aware of the Holy Spirit in here today. I have to really... Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, now another word. I'm just looking at this word. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh. He's so strong in here today. Mm. Wow. Another word, if I can even look at this word, is water. Oh, water, yes. <laughs> yes, he who waters. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, we've got here, he who waters, it's yeah. to be saturated. Yes, umave. To, umave. To have one's fill. Yeah. Your giving a person to, from your soul to their soul a drink you're throwing water on them you're throwing rain on them you're soaking them um yeah and you're, the you're, water thrown over the other soul like raining heavy heavy rain yeah upon it means them. it means to drench oh it means to yes. be saturated wow. it means to be yes. satiated yes actually to have one's fill mm. Um, yeah. or to take one's fill mm. um, to water abundantly so so this this um, person who is um, uh, being a blessing to the other is actually drenching and saturating um, is causing somebody to drink mm. to their absolute fullness they can't drink any more they can't take anymore. Wow, they're being given the fullness. They're being absolutely saturated and and drenched with uh, this this this. This is a kind of picture that's being yes. painted yes. here. Yes, yes. This blessing yes. has this kind of. We're, we're trying. What what yes. the 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 proverb yeah. the, what the writer of the proverb is trying to illustrate here is what this blessing does, and he's, he's given this little uh, picture, uh, kind of in, image here of. Mm. Uh, drenching somebody mm. or giving them something that is absolutely filling that they can't take anymore they're totally full of um, in this case water well so the soul that blesses yeah will be enriched yes and one who waters will himself or herself yes be watered yeah not holding anything back that's right how can you ab absolutely saturate uh, and soak somebody if something of the blessing is withheld yes because that person will not be completely filled mm. this is the image of the water they, they can't be completely filled and saturated and satiated if something is held back yes so this is what God is saying blessing is. Yes. And he wants us to be blessers. Yes. Like he is a blesser. Um, we can bless in all kinds of ways and not hold back. Mm. Um, the Bible actually 
tells us, um, wants us to be generous, to be generous givers uh, in all our ways of being a blessing. Uh, there's actually um, a scripture, um, teacher Andy, 2 Corinthians 9, um, 5 to 13, oh, yes. that you wanted to read out. Yeah, let me have... Um, um, about giving to God. Let me get that. Yes. Uh, Blessing two, God, yeah, yeah blessing two, others. 2 Corinthians 9. 2 Corinthians 9, 5 to 13. <coughs> 5 to 13. And then verse 15. So yeah. so this is the Apostle Paul writing mm. to um, uh, mm. this church in Corinth. And, mm. and the church in Corinth has um, agreed to, um, to uh, get together a gift um, um, to, uh, to send on. And... Um, uh, he, he's just reminding them and encouraging them about this thing. Uh, so in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 9, it starts, So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers and sisters to go on ahead to you to arrange in advance for the gift you had promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an exaction. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart. See, there again is this innermost being thing, this nefesh. See, this is a, a mini exposition of this actual proverb. Uh, the, the, I mean, this is a, a Gentile church that uh, the apostle is writing to, and he's given them a mini exposition or a, a, an explanation of this very proverb. Each one should give, uh, each one must give. Um, it's not each one should give, it's each one must give as he has decided in his heart. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, he has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food Will, all, will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way. You see how this links in with this, this enriching, this growing fat, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission flowing from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others. So there it is, there, there it is in the New Testament, a, a mini exposition by the Apostle Paul, who is um, a Hebrew of Hebrews, writing to these, um, these Gentile Christians um, about this, uh, this very proverb. Mm. Did you mention verse 15 as well then? Oh, Andrew? verse 15, yeah. oh no, I didn't. So um, we're still in 2 Corinthians. I didn't, um, yeah, you wanted to I didn't carry on to, uh, 2 to, Corinthians to verse 9. 15. Uh, verse 15 you wanted to mention. Oh, verse 15, right, yeah. okay. Mm. Yeah, that was it. And probably um, probably the most important part of this little uh, exposition that the Apostle Paul is, um, is writing mm. and is reminding the Corinthian church of the position that they're in um, because of something that's happened. Verse 15 says this, thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift, exclamation mark. 
thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. So they're giving, but God has given an inexpressible gift. And we know who that is. Jesus. Jesus our Lord. Jesus. Yes. Yes. So when we are generous, when we give, I mean, when we, this is just uh, come to mind, Teacher Andy, that when we give our tithes and our offerings, when we give our tithes, the Lord says he rebukes the devourer on our behalf. Yes. Yeah, blessing will come back. And he says, um, test me on this, you know, and I'll see if I won't open the windows of heaven yeah. and pour out such a blessing on, the, you, blessing on you that you won't be able to contain it. It's the only time in the whole Bible he where says, God test says, me. test me. Yeah. We're not yeah. to test the Lord, okay? <laughs> I mean, that, that is... Um, Foolish. <laughs> that, and, and we are told, do not put the Lord to your God to the test. Yes. But God himself says in this one instant, yeah. test Tithe, me, I'm test tithing. me this thing. Yeah. So and you'll, you will see. Yes. No other tests yes. are, uh, are to be, yeah. you can't test the Lord. Yeah, and, and sometimes um, people who don't really know Jesus, um, they, they say, oh, the church is just after your money. Oh, yeah. But as Christians, we give our tithes and our offerings, not only in obedience to God, but because we want to. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to give to God? Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to? But the thing is, we're not giving to the church as such. We are giving to God. And once anything that we give, whether it's our tithes, our offerings, whether whatever kind of blessing that we give, as well as our tithes and offerings, they are given to God. Yeah. They're not given to people. They're not given to the church. And hands off. Yeah. Hands off. It's none of our business after that. It's none of our business. That's right. It's over to God what we give. Yeah. And it's none of our business. We we are not um we are not to look at the outcome. No. We of, give of, to God. Of what um is done with that yeah. offering or that tithe. Yeah. Um that is given to him. Yes, yes. And and the responsibility for, for what happens to that is nothing to do with us. Yeah, we've done the right thing. We, we are God. obeying yeah. God and yes. we, are, we, we are giving thanks for yes. his inexpressible gift. We are Jesus. doing something uh, in return. Yes, but so God has blessed creation and all of us by sending Jesus. And the blessing that he brought to us um, has soaked us and saturated us yes. with his love yeah. and we send this love, we rain this love back to him yeah. and we are soaked and full and we can't help but bless him back. Yeah, I mean this is the last, um, this is the last word uh, in the proverb, yore, mm. um, uh, I mean it, it's, um, it's, it's a funny kind of word in the Hebrew. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it means to throw or to to shoot or to cast but also to pour mm -hmm. um, um, uh, and from that the the meaning goes on on and on it means to pour out and to throw water like rain so um, it's like God has fully blessed us and saturated us and we're kind of firing back to him yeah. our praise and our thanks and we're shooting up to him like rain um uh, 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 like like we're firing water back to him yeah. in praise yeah. and in thanksgiving yeah. um uh, because of what he's done for us first mm. yes absolutely uh, and this proverb tells us that this this activity this is a fundamental thing that will actually happen. Yes. We get saturated and we can't help but but bless backwards and, and, mm. and shoot backwards. Yes. So someone, one soul is in need of a blessing and, and one soul is full and able to bless. Yes. And the other soul is in need of blessing. And so this proverb is teaching us that we are to be generous, yeah. more than generous. We're to soak the other soul, to saturate it in blessing. Yeah. And, and we don't lose out by giving 
You see, that's the world's way of thinking, Tito yeah, Ramsey. Right, yeah. The world thinks, how can you give yeah. and keep giving, especially when you don't seem to have a lot to give? Yeah, there's a, there's this idea of what's Holding in it. Holding on, what's, what's in, in it, it for me? me? <laughs> and, and, yeah, and what it, do I get out of I'm it? If I'm giving it all away, <laughs> yeah. then I'm in trouble. Yes, yes. Then um, I won't have I'm anything. Not gonna ha so therefore I have to maybe give some, yeah, definitely, but... Uh, I can't give it all. Yeah. Because of my Needs. my my nefesh. Yeah. yeah, my flesh. My, my flesh. nefesh. My, yeah. soul, my soul. My life needs is very needy and has to have something to keep it going. Yes. Okay. There's there's not this sense of abandonment and and just blessing out mm. to saturate the one in need. Mm. Uh, that that is just of the way that the world thinks but, there, there is a mm -hmm. danger in giving mm. therefore we have to hold exercise on. caution yes and hold we on we can give be but tight there's a cautiousness in it yes be tight yes it's not this generosity yes but the kingdom of god is the opposite Absolutely. it's the opposite it's like we don't lose out yes we, god's promises we don't lose Th out this is this is such a fundamental yeah scripture that we have to we have to base our lives on mm. and so we then get rained on ourselves and we get soaked ourselves yes and we are all of us the souls in need of jesus and his yeah. blessing and jesus did not hold back god the father and the holy spirit and jesus the son of god did yeah. not hold back they did not hold back with their love we became filled and we can't help but bless him back. Yeah, we 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 became paupers um, at the fall, uh, and in need of God's blessing, mm. uh, in need of rescue, yes. and um, total uh, total dependence and and in, in need. And e even now, even uh, the Christian is in this uh, a kind of power relationship of the blesser and the blessee we need blessing mm. and god does not withhold his blessing from us yes and we are in need of blessing and he gives blessing yes and when we receive the blessing i mean we 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 enriched in every we're, way we made fat in that kind of hebrew way of thinking we're anointed we're made into a special privileged position and therefore, we can give away freely from our nefesh, from our innermost being, from ourself. And he wants to. He wants us to be like that. What a glorious picture of um, a community living the with God life in the, from yes. the kingdom of God. Yes, every soul, individual nefesh, <laughs> yes. living like that, blessing one another. Yes. And not holding anything back. Yes, bring in the blessing. Yes, in in, in whatever way the and the things that they have, because because yes. that scripture um, that we read out in um, two Corinthians talks about you know what what, you, what you've decided mm. in your heart mm. to give and give willingly, not under compulsion. Um, whatever you've decided, the things that you have, God God's not requiring us to give things that we don't have. Mm. Um, but what we do have. Yeah. This this scripture is telling us the generosity, the blessing. Yes. Is in our soul. Yes. And it must be there because why well, we're made in the image of God. And Apostle Sam was actually um, preaching last week about the willing, the willing people and the people who are not willing. So yeah. I've just realised that. So this um, the Holy Spirit is following on with this willingness. Yes. The willingness of heart, mm. the willingness to bring blessing. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's an act of will there. Yes, yes, yes. So so Yes, yes, and, we and, can give or we can hold back. And, and that yeah. comes into yes. that scripture yes. in two Corinthians yeah. chapter nine, where it says a not under compulsion. Mm. Yeah, oh not no. under compulsion. So so that willing element yes. is there. Yeah. That you you give willingly and yes. and, and, and it, it he backs this up. See yeah. he's he's expanding this proverb. Mm. He backs this up and saying that God loves mm. a cheerful mm. Mm. giver. Yes. I mean if you're if somebody is giving you something, it could be a meal, 
but they don't really want to give you that they're thinking about the cost of that meal um in fine financial terms and that and the time and effort that's been put into shopping preparing cooking that meal and they give it you but they don't they're, they're resentful they don't really want to it's feed you grudgingly. it's given grudgingly it's like you'd rather not have it it sort of turns in your stomach mm. you know but when it's given like come and enjoy yeah you know glad to have you freely blessed let's yeah. enjoy this you know together and it's just like yes liberation yeah Liberation. I mean, Jesus himself said 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 this, didn't he? In, in in one of his teachings, freely you have received. Freely give. Freely give. Yes, and uh, so the kingdom of God, um, we're told by Jesus that we give and receive, give, receive, give, receive, give, receive, give, receive. It's not receive, hold on, and don't give back. Yeah. It's a giving kingdom. Give and you receive. Give. So maybe, you know, if we're not being blessed, having lots of blessings, yeah. Teacher Andy, we need to be giving more. Maybe. Bring maybe, the blessing, maybe give you, the blessing. Maybe if a, a person, uh, their life is kind of dry, um, arid. Yeah, not, empty. Empty, not full of um, blessing, and they're, they're, they're wondering why, and they're praying a lot about yeah. it. Yeah. Maybe they haven't read this um, yeah. proverb, or maybe yeah. they've read it and not understood it, or maybe yeah. they've read it and they they just don't apply it. Maybe they maybe they're just not um, uh, willing. Mm. Um, but this being a fundamental principle mm. of of the kingdom of God, and God can't change His word and won't change yeah. His word, and He has set this down as a fundamental law mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that operates. Mm in and of itself if that person then changes if yeah. they repent i mean the repent just means think again and change your mind think again change your mind so so think again about this if your life is that kind of arid way and you you're you don't understand it god's promised all these blessings and i'm not receiving them where is it all mm -hmm. uh, my life is so empty and mm -hmm. uh, and i haven't got it well, maybe you should think again and think about this proverb mm. and think about, are you blessing? Are you <coughs> watering? Mm. Because if you don't water and don't water to such a, an extent that you saturate and, and you, you feel in that, that kind of little picture image there, mm. then the other part of it won't actually happen. You won't be watered yourself mm. god set it down there as a, a as a fundamental principle mm. he who blesses in this kind of way will be blessed yes will be watered yes and so um we don't give to receive no 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 that's not the way it works it's, it's, it's not some kind of manipulation plan no. a <laughs> plot <laughs> yeah try, trying to get god to sort of do something that... it's not about manipulation no, no. it's a, the generous heart that wants to give yeah. and be generous and this proverb states that this kingdom principle is always at work it's always, always operating it's always yeah. at work it, it never it yeah. never ceases it's, yeah. it, it's kind of like a, an engine or a machine or some kind of motor yeah. um some kind of law unto itself mm. if you do this this is the outcome yes if you don't do this this is the outcome, this is the outcome. <laughs> yes so generous souls are willing souls yes we have to yeah i think we've already said that and apostle sam was saying that last week at church when he was preaching um generous souls are willing souls willing to love others yeah. willing to serve uh, willing to help, willing to give out, yeah. w willing to give out to others, to give out of our very lives and our very selves, being generous to others. And uh, as we bless and water, we will be blessed and watered. It's a kingdom of God principle. That's right. I I'm just thinking As of we it. say, we don't do this to receive and get back. That's manipulation. And that is plotting and scheming. No, we, we give because... We love God, we love Jesus, and we're so blessed by him that we can't help but give it out. Yeah, I'm just thinking of a scripture. Mm. Um, I can't actually find the, the chapter and verse at the moment. It's in Luke somewhere, I think. What scripture is it? Um, it's, it's a, it's Jesus talks about 
people who put their hand to the plough oh, yeah. and turn back. They're not fit for the kingdom. Mm. Um, we can't turn back. We've got to carry on. Yeah. Um, you put your hand to the plough, that's it. Yes, you, yes. You, um, you go forward. Yes. And yes. Um, uh, you, um, you're all in, in other words, Jesus all is in, saying. All in, yeah. You don't put your hand to this plough and then look back mm. uh, at, at uh, the consequences or, or whatever. I mean, he's using this agricultural language, speaking to people who, who, who in the day knew about this method of farming so that he could illustrate a point. You don't look back when you're ploughing. You look forward to, to where you're going. So what he's saying is, if you put your hand to this plough, his kingdom, you don't look back. There's no looking back. So it's all in. It's and all that's what in. this um, generous nefesh, this generous blessing soul is all about. You don't look back. You don't count the cost. You're all in. We're not holding on tightly. No, it's not keeping back a, a portion. It's it's saturating the yes. the one who needs the yes. blessing. And you wanted to read out, um, Teacher Randy, Matthew six thirty two and thirty three. Um, God knows that we all have needs. Oh yeah, that's right. So it's yeah. easy to think I have needs, or someone hasn't blessed me, so why should I bless them? Um, someone hasn't been good to me, so why should I be good to them? But what we're looking at here is kingdom living, kingdom reality, which is the other way up. It's giving and you will receive. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, so. Um, Jesus, yeah, let me start it at verse, uh, say maybe verse 31, actually. Um, this is Jesus teaching in Matthew chapter 6 verse 31 is he says this mm. therefore do not be anxious saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the Gentiles seek after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them all but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you now, what he's saying there in verse 32, the Gentiles, that's the non-believers, because he's addressing here, he's speaking to uh, Hebrew believers. So when he mentions the Gentiles, they know that he's saying people who don't believe in God. But what he's saying is your heavenly father, God, he knows, knows that you need all of these things. But the, the important thing is that you seek after um, the kingdom of God. All these are the things they've just given you anyway. Mm. So that shows that we don't have to hold on to things. We don't have to be seeking and mm. fretting uh, and being, like he says, anxious about these things. Mm. Um, mm. Because your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these material goods to keep this tent, to keep this bodily frame going and, and, and your house and, and, and whatever it is, your family. He knows that you need all these things. But the important thing is to... to, is to to seek the kingdom, to get into the kingdom way of living. Yeah. So God knows that we all have needs and we're to seek first, not the needs, but not seek the needs. first yes, the kingdom right. of God and his righteousness. And we are to trust God for our needs to be met. And our faith in God allows us to be generous if we believe this proverb, yeah. if we build our lives on this proverb, yeah. and we will never lack because this is a kingdom principle. Yeah. Jesus tells us not to run after things um, because the Father knows what we need. So we seek first the kingdom, and this is a kingdom principle. Yeah. And it's not always about praying and asking God for lots of things and bigger things. What he's showing us is the way to have a big life. Yes. The way to have a big life that is saturated, that yeah. is fulfilled, that is soaked, yeah. that is um, anointed. Yeah, like that the Hebrew is mind. Growing that and become, growing and growing. You become fat. In other words, there's a growth. Yes. A uh, continual growth in you. Yes, and this doesn't come from asking God for lots of things. Although no, no. our personal relationship with God, we can say whatever we like to the Lord, 
But this proverb is showing us that by believing and obeying this proverb and his word that we build our lives on, by believing it and obeying it, um, there's a fixed law there that God won't change. Yeah. Um, belief and obedience. Uh, we either have belief and obedience or we're in unbelief and disobedience, willingness or unwillingness. That's right. And um, there will be an outcome either way, one either way, way or the other. Either way. And so, yeah, do we want big things from God um, in our lives? Well, he shows us how to do it. He shows us yeah. how it works, how to have big things from God, things of real worth, things of real value, real worth, yeah. of eternal value. Yeah. And he's shown us the way of how to yeah. have this. And we're to walk in it and trust in him. So we're not talking about um, growing in material wealth here because Jesus, Jesus tells us in, in the, um, the Matthew 6 teaching that Gentiles, the unbelievers, run after all these things. They strive after all of these things. Um, but the fact your Heavenly Father knows that you need them and he'll just supply them. So the important thing here is... This proverb, Proverb 11.25, is a fixed principle that operates. Yes. 24-7. Yes. Um, and take it or leave it. Mm. It's there. Take it or leave it. If you take it, it operates. If you leave it, it still operates. It's about your choice mm. and about your faith in the word of God. God has embedded and implanted this law into his kingdom. And Jesus operated like this. Jesus operated in his ministry from this and other Proverbs and other scriptures. This is why it, it can be said um, in Acts chapter 10 verse 38 that he went around doing good and freeing all who were under the oppression of the of the devil why because he was going around blessing and having all of his needs met he was going around and watering and being watered he was he was saturating and filling others mm -hmm. and he was being saturated and filled himself this is a kingdom principle embedded by god that we have to really get into our hearts and souls and get our lives built on and get operating in yeah and there's a, a scripture here teacher randy um isaiah um chapter 1 verse 19 that i'm sure you'll all know if you are willing and obedient you will eat from the fat of the land yeah uh, there's that word fat again yeah See, all the goodness, the bigness, the goodness, the bigness, the growth, the good things, yes, the anointing, the idea of fatness isn't, yeah. like I say, <laughs> this kind of negative connotation. It's the increase, yes, it's uh, of the land, yeah, yes, uh, and that in in God's kingdom is a never-ending kind of growth, mm. um, and mm. the the use of the. The, what the language that the prophet is using there mm. is obviously talking about the fat of the land, the increase of yield of, of land, but yeah. it's, it's, it's also talking about spiritual growth. Yes, absolutely. Spiritual fat, spiritual absolutely. enlargement and, yes. and, and anointing and, and development. Re revelation. Yeah. yeah, and intimacy with God, understanding. Yeah. Yes. Um, of of him and his kingdom, Live, how, how he lives, how live, he works. Living, living life without lack. Yes. Living life it. without lack. That's right, yeah. Because you know that God is the source of all of your the, blessing. Of, of all the blessing, Of all yeah. we need, yeah. yes. And so God wants us to be blessed. Yes. He is the blesser. Yes. He blesses us. He's God wants us to be blessed and he wants us to prosper. Yeah. He wants this. And uh, we will be, and we are, as we follow his divine law, it's guaranteed. This is God's overwhelming love, his overwhelming kindness, yeah. his overwhelming grace to us. And the greatest gift of all, Jesus, that he's yeah. given us. And so... So in our greatest 
Yeah. So, so, so in our <laughs> greatest need prophetess. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. It, it's just come to mind. Mm. Sorry to interrupt you, but it, and our greatest need um, was that we are or were abject sinners mm. and fallen from God and separated from him in our spirits. So he had to send his son, his only son, to die on the cross and, and bear our sin. He had to bless us in that way. He had to come and be a blessing in that way. So Father, Son and Holy Spirit had to be this blessing to us so that we could have this filling yes. um, and this relationship that our lives could be blessed. So this is why it's described as the un indescribable gift. gift. When something is indescribable, that means you can't describe it. It's beyond, beyond description. And that's referring to what the Lord Jesus Christ came and did. And it was a gift from God the Father to us. A blessing from the Father of blessings to us. And um, this is why he has put this proverb uh, in here. To show us how his kingdom works. The kingdom life, the with God life. Yes. So if you don't know Jesus and you want to have this blessed life, this giving and receiving life that you're hearing about today, come to Jesus. He's everywhere. He's where you are now. Whether that's in a hotel room, in your own house, in a restaurant, at work, in your car, in a park. He is everywhere. Pray to him. Ask him to forgive you for all of your sins and ask him to come into your life as your Lord and as your Saviour. And he will make everything new. Yeah. He will wipe away your past all the stuff that you know doesn't please him, he'll wipe it all away, make your slate clean like it never happened. And you will know him. Yeah. Get yourself a Bible. Our website, go on our website, www.cityfamilychurch.com and we have a wealth of help for you on our website. If you're in Coventry or the surrounding area, come and visit us. We start at 10.30 every Sunday morning at uh, City Family Church and we meet at a building called Radio Plus. Um, I don't have the postcode on me at the moment, but um, if it's on the website. It's on the website. It's on the website in Coventry and uh, very close to um, the Ring Road. And get in touch with us. We've got a contact page on our website. Get in touch with us. Uh, ask us questions. Let us help you. Yeah. Let God help you through us. Let us be a blessing to you because God has blessed us. Yeah. And uh, if you've got anything you want us to pray about, we will happily, very gladly, pray with you about something. But the main thing is that you connect. And the main one to connect with is Jesus. Yeah. And then after Jesus, connect with other Christians. Jesus will, Jesus will give you a new spirit. Mm. It will make your spirit alive. And um, you may not understand some of the terms that we use about sin, things like that. These are just things that displease God. And, um, hurt us he and hurt will, others. But, sorry? Hurt us and hurt others. Yes, uh, yeah. And hurt God. Uh, and, and things you know that are wrong, but... Jesus on the cross paid the price for these and um, he will give you forgiveness of this and give you a completely new life. We can testify to this as many, 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 many Christians can and you then will 
come into something completely new. And this proverb that we've been um, picking at this, the today, um, if you bed your life, build your life on the principles that are involved uh, or outlined to us in this proverb, you will see this working out because it is a fixed principle that God has stated. And the thing is, when God says something, he won't change his mind. Once God says it, it's, it can't be unsaid. Because the nature of God, he is so perfect. If he says something, it's a perfect saying. Therefore, he can't change it because change is either for good or for worse. And because God is perfect, it's a perfect saying. So therefore, this proverb is a perfect saying from God. And the principles embedded in it can't be changed. They work every time. You build your life on this, you will see the watering. You will see the blessing. Mm. When you bless, you will be blessed. So make that connection with Jesus. Yeah. And with uh, a Bible-believing church. Yeah. With other Christians yeah. who are following Jesus. Yeah. So I think that about wraps it up for today, Teacher Andy. So again, thanks for being with us. And um, I think we've picked at this proverb quite yeah. well. We've picked at a lot of this proverb. Yeah. And it's a straightforward proverb. There's no grayness about yeah. it. It's completely black and white. It's completely clear. Yeah. Give. Be generous. Yeah, from your um, own self. Yeah, let me just read it out one more time before we finish. Before we say goodbye. It's such a great proverb. The soul that brings blessing. What are we bringing? Wherever we go. Blessing. Wherever we go. Whatever you turn up, what are you bringing? Yeah. Bring blessing. Bring blessing. And, be a blesser. And you will be enriched. You'll be better off for it. You will be enriched. And the one who waters, refreshes others, waters, will himself or herself be watered back, be refreshed back. Yeah. Yeah. In the ways that we've spoken of today. Mm. So thanks, Teacher Andy. Yeah, it's been great, <laughs> Proptus Jane. Yeah. We hope you've uh, really got something from this. Uh, I'm sure um, God the Holy Spirit will apply his word as he sees fit. And uh, you may get even more out of this than uh, we, um, we've given. And um, there's a scripture in Jeremiah uh, chapter 1, verse um, 12, that says uh, um, that uh, he watches over his word to mm. perform it. So God is totally invested in this proverb and in all his word to perform it. Amen. Amen. So God bless you and we will see you next time in City Family Church in the studio and for our next picking at the proverbs. So be a blessing and you will be blessed. Hey. Water others and you will be watered. Amen. Amen. Bye for today. Bye, Bye for now.